Hello and uh, welcome to this presentation on the subject of hedging with forward contracts. In this example we're going to look at how a farmer interacts with a manufacturer in order to lock in a favourable price for their commodity. Now in this example we're going to ignore the uh, intervention or intermediation of a broker or a market maker or a dealer uh, just to keep the example simple. Later on in further presentations we'll see how these participants interact However, let's just imagine that we have a, a farmer here who is a grower of uh, wheat or barley or sugar or coffee or cocoa. As such, we refer to the farmer as a natural long. What we mean is that the farmer owns the crops and as such, he's going to be thinking about at some stage in the near future, selling his crops. Now, what he's concerned about is that uh, if his crops are still in the ground and uh, he's still waiting for harvest time, he's worried that between now and the point of uh, bringing his crops to market, prices uh, may fall. So what the farmer may wish to do is to enter into an agreement with uh, somebody who is on the proverbial other side of the fence, so to speak, that is maybe the manufacturer, and try and agree today to lock in a forward selling price for his crops. Now, let's suppose we have um, the, the manufacturer or the refiner or the roaster or the miller. They, um, by contrast, are considered to be a natural short. That is to say, today they may have a certain amount of the raw material uh, inventory which they use for production processes. And uh, over the next few weeks or months, of course, that uh, inventory is going to be depleted. So they're going to be looking to replenish their inventory in the near future. So therefore, what they're worried about in the intervening period is that they're worried about prices rising. So it makes um, good commercial sense for the, the farmer on the one hand and the manufacturer on the other to enter into a forward contract where they can agree to uh, buy and sell on a forward basis at a mutually convenient price. In this example, we'll assume that that price is $100 per unit and that they're trading, say, 1,000 units, which of course could be barrels of oil or bushels of wheat or tons of sugar, for example. So what the farmer is going to do today is to sell forward at $100, and the manufacturer or the refiner or the roaster or the miller is going to buy uh, on a forward basis at um, $100. So therefore, today what happens is that the forward price of $100 is struck. And then come delivery day, what happens is that the farmer will deliver the correct amount of uh, quantity and the quality of the underlying asset in the right location, and the buyer will pay the agreed price, which in this case was um, $100. So what's happened then during the hedging period is that the farmer and the manufacturer have been able to lock in price certainty. Now, of course, we... Uh, have to consider what happens if on delivery day in the local market prices happen to be above or below $100. Well let's just suppose that uh, on delivery day in the local market prices are trading at say $150. In that example the uh, manufacturer then would be uh, somewhat uh, pleased with their, their hedge outcome because they've locked in an agreed price of $100. Now, uh, the, the, the farmer, by contrast, would be somewhat um, perturbed because what they have is an obligation to deliver their crops at a price of $100, not being able to achieve the local price of $150. By contrast, of course, if in the local market the prices were, say, at $50, in that situation, then the farmer would be very pleased with their hedge outcome because they're able to lock in through the forward contract to selling price of $100. And by contrast, again, the manufacturer would be uh, somewhat perturbed by the outcome because they're committed through the full contract to buy $100 and not get their crops in the local market at um, uh, $50. What we witness here, of course, is the, um, the cost, if you like, of hedging. Because a hedge, in the case of a forward contract, locks in price certainty. The cost of the hedge is to forego any profit opportunity. Now, the other consideration in a forward contract is what happens if during the life of the forward contract, either the farmer or the manufacturer fails to honour their obligation in terms of uh, delivery. Well, that's going to be the subject of the, the next presentation when we look at the consequences of either the farmer or the manufacturer defaulting on their obligation.